हेलो ओके सो सॉरी अबाउट दैट स्मॉल ग्लेज सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वील कंटिन्यू आर डिस्कशन ऑन कंट्रोलर डिजाइन एंड इन पर्टिकुलर वी वेर टॉकिंग अबाउट डायनामिक प्रोग्रामिंग एंड एल क्यू आर प्रॉब्लम so let me remind you because it was like 5 days back let me remind you what dynamic programming said so i have a system whose state transition is given by this and i have constraints these are my constraints okay equality constraint and inequality constraint and the way to solve this problem is as follows how do we solve this problem well oh what is the performance index j of gamma c capital t plus 1 x t plus 1 and t goes from 0 to capital t okay so it's a finite horizon problem time goes from 0 to capital t plus 1 uh this capital t plus 1 of course varies from problem to problem so in some cases this capital t could be a million or a billion in some cases it could be just uh, 10 or 50 okay if you are let's say you are optimizing something over a period of a day and your time scale is of the order of hours your capital t is 24 right because there are 24 hours in a day okay so that's the order we are looking at if you are in a vehicle setting and you are trying to control something at milliseconds or 100 millisecond scale you want to optimize it for 5 seconds so let's say one time step is 100 milliseconds you want to optimize for 5 seconds you have 50 time steps in that particular problem so it depends uh, it depends on application what the capital t is uh, the higher the capital t is the more the complexity of the problem becomes and the more difficult it becomes to control that system or design the controller uh, to give you an example from my experience if i run a 24 hour, 24 hour optimization problem um there will be so i was running some optimization for optimizing the uh electricity consumption of air conditioning system for 24 hour period and it takes me for one thermostat it takes me about 5 minutes to solve this problem okay so that's what you are looking at in some situations 5 minutes is too long if you are optimizing for um Uh, the drivability of vehicle in front of traffic lights or in front of other traffic systems typically the latency requirement for solving this optimization is of the order of milliseconds 100 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds so in those situations you have to carefully pick what value of capital t you can take because uh, you may not be able to finish the computation in 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds so just something to keep in mind this capital t is a design variable it's it's what we design based on our experience okay so this is my j of gamma the way to solve it is i define my vt plus 1 of xt plus 1 as the terminal cost and then i iteratively define my vt of xt and wt as minimum over all ut in rm h of xt ut wt 0 g less than equal to 0 and i want to minimize This is how I define my gamma, uh, my value function v t. 
This is known as the value function. And the gamma t, gamma star t, which is the optimal policy, that's equal to the argument of the same thing. Let me write it on the other side. So argmin of the same optimization problem. Of course, when you solve optimization on a computer, you get both the optimal value and the optimal point as the output of the optimization algorithm. So you will be able to get both the values using the same optimization routine. You don't have to run optimization two times. So this is what we did in the previous class. And then we were talking about how do we incorporate experience in this formulation. This formulation is very complicated. Okay, too many things, too many moving parts here. But I'm an airline pilot and I fly planes. I've flown planes for like 5,000 hours or something. So I have some experience flying planes. And I want to incorporate that experience within this formulation. Or I'm a chemical plant manager for the last 15 years and I have some experience about how to run a plant. And I want to use that experience to simplify this optimization problem further. Um, you can take any industry, okay? People have experience in those industries about what is optimal and what is not optimal. And the question is, how do we incorporate that here in this particular formulation? This seems too abstract, too complicated, okay? So here is what we will do. We will let x bar t and u bar t denote the nominal values. And we want to look at the system around this nominal value. We want to look at the evolution of the system around this nominal value or nominal trajectory. Let me call it nominal trajectory, not values, because value is already taken. And we were thinking about trying to simplify this problem in the previous class. So let's, let's uh, try to figure it out. So I have xt plus 1. I'm just doing it for two variables. The extension to the case with noise is pretty similar. You can have w bar t, which is the nominal noise. And you can do the same thing. It could be a forecast of the noise. So this is what I have. What I'm going to do is subtract the nominal trajectory from this expression. So I have xt plus 1 minus So I subtracted the nominal trajectory from the, from the state evolution equation. And this is where we had stopped last time in the previous class. Now can someone tell me how do I simplify this expression? I don't want equality. I just want something which is an approximation to this, to this uh, expression. What sort of approximation methods do we know about? When we have function evaluated at a point minus function evaluated at some other point, what sort of approximation can we use? Taylor series, right? Let's just use first order Taylor series. We don't even want to go to the second order case. So let's just use first order Taylor series. What sort of expression should I write here? Okay, so first I'm going to take the derivative with respect to xt and then write the Taylor difference, and then derivative with respect to ut, and then write that difference. So I have this multiplied by xt minus x bar t plus gradient of ut ft 
multiplied by u t minus u bar t. Okay, this uh, f t is also evaluated at x bar and u bar. This gradient, sorry, the gradient is evaluated at x bar and u bar. Sorry? This one. This one it at x bar and u bar t. I, I didn't have space to write, otherwise I would have written it. Okay. Everyone agrees with this expression? Any questions so far? Okay, everything looks correct. Anything, anything that you notice there, any simplification, not simplification, but any renaming that we can do to make our life easier. Something, something is very nice about that particular expression. What is nice? So on both sides of the equality, or rather approximate inequality, we see this term x minus x bar and u minus u bar, right? So that's the observation. So let's rename it. Let's rename it as a new variable. Let me call it error. And what was the other thing? Let me call it vt. No, vt is already used. Uh, Vt, Z, Zt, no, not Zt. U, V, W, X, Y, Z, no. What should I take? Uh, I'm trying to think of, let me write AT, okay. AT, AT is fine. UT minus U bar T. So I'm just renaming the variable. I'm going to call this, oh, let me rename gradient of xt, ft, let me call this at. I'm again in a fix. This is capital A, this is small a, that's fine. Let me call that Vt. So what I see is I can write the expression approximately. OK, so I have this expression for the error, which is the difference between the true trajectory and the nominal trajectory. And what is the goal here? So I know from my experience that x bar t, u bar t is what we should be taking. But there is so many things happening in the system that the system seems to be deviating away from this x bar t and u bar t. It's deviating from the nominal trajectory. I know how to get to the moon. This is the trajectory I'm supposed to take. But there's so much of wind in the atmosphere that my rocket is going away from the path, right? Or I have a chemical plant, and the weather is changing, the humidity is changing. And because of all that, you know, some of the chemical processes are deviating from the nominal trajectory. Um, or we want, our, we want the power in our socket to be at 60 hertz. But because of so many demands and generation fluctuating, so generation is fluctuating due to renewable energy, and the demand is fluctuating because I plugged in my laptop, and now suddenly I'm requiring 100 watts or 200 watts more power 
from the electrical machinery in Ohio, right? Or I could be ironing my clothes, I could be running my dishwasher, I could be turning on my air conditioner. All of that is adding to the uncertainty in the system. And therefore, the system is deviating from the nominal trajectory. The system is supposed to be at 60 hertz. The system means the AC power, but it's 59.995 hertz or 60.05 hertz, okay? So it's deviating from the nominal trajectory. So this is what my error evolution looks like. What should the goal of the system designer be? What is it that the system de designer would like to do? What if you were managing the electricity infrastructure in Ohio and you see every second or every minute the frequency is changing. It's, it's, it's sometimes above 60 hertz, it's sometimes below 60 hertz. What is it that you want to do? Minimize the error, right? So you want to minimize the error. You want to minimize ET, right? What else? So you want to minimize ET. I want my ET to go to zero. I want the error to go to zero. What else should we try to minimize? This is the nominal effort. This is the effort it takes to keep things at 60 hertz. Okay, but of course I have to deviate from the nominal effort. I have to make some other effort in order to keep the uh, trajectory at 60 hertz, in order to keep the frequency at 60 hertz. So, so, so is there something about 80 that you would like to minimize as well? Sorry? The cost? The cost of 80, right? So we would like to minimize the cost of 80. So we are already spending some nominal effort in order to keep the frequency at 60 hertz. But I don't want to put in too much effort away from the nominal trajectory in order to move things back to the nominal trajectory, right? So we want to have some cost of effort that I'm making added to the to the optimization problem. So you have a cost for letting the error go to zero, and we want to have a cost for letting the effort go to zero as well. And the way to do that is what is known as we'll take a quadratic cost, so my CT of ET and AT, ET transpose Q ET, Here Q is a positive definite matrix, R is a positive, Q is a positive semi-definite matrix, R is a positive definite matrix, T goes from zero to capital T. And then maybe some terminal cost. This is the terminal cost that I'm adding. Okay, so this is known as a linear system. This is known as a quadratic cost. And naturally you want to minimize E of T by solving, by minimizing the cost. You want to minimize E of T, you want E of T to go to zero and you also want A of T to go to zero. We want minimal effort and minimal error, okay? And some trade-off there, therein, so that's why we have this Q and R matrix. So by increasing the value of Q, you focus less on effort, more on the error. By increasing the value of R, you focus more on the effort, and you focus less on getting the error go to zero. Okay, so there's the trade-off inherent but an appropriate choice of Q and R in this particular cost function. Okay, and this is known as, this is the famous LQR problem. Linear quadratic regulator, so linear quadratic, and the regulator stands for the fact that we want the error to go to zero. So we want to regulate the error 
And what does it mean to regulate the error? We want the error to go to zero. So linear quadratic regulator problem. This is the linear quadratic regulator problem. Any question with this derivation? Deviation, yeah. Yeah. So cost of error and the cost of action or, or deviation from the nominal effort. Usually what happens in, in most of these systems is that this nominal effort is embedded in the microcontroller or what is known as programmable logic controller, PLC. So the nominal effort is already encoded in those microcontrollers. And all you have to do is send information about AT, which is like deviation from the nominal effort. That's what you have to just send the input to the microcontroller. And it will take care of encoding that information and sending the signal to the actuator to do whatever it's supposed to do. Of course, in signals and systems class, which I assume everyone has taken, because that's a prerequisite for this class. In the signals and systems class, you had learned about this analog to digital converter, digital to analog converter, and all that. So the PLC, where you input this information 80, it's a digital signal. And that gets converted. If you're running a motor, for instance, it, takes a, it doesn't take digital signal. It takes analog signal. So then that information gets converted to analog signal and goes inside the motor and increases or decreases the RPM of the motor or whatever other process that you are, you are controlling. OK, so this is the LQR problem. And we are not considering constraints for the moment. I'll get to the constraints in a bit when we talk about MPC. Um, but this is the LQR problem. Let's try and see if we can solve this problem by hand, just by applying dynamic programming. OK? P of capital T plus 1. What is this equal to? What should this be equal to? That's the terminal cost right here. Okay. So this is Okay. So that's my terminal cost. What should I do? I don't have any constraints. So my VT, or V, let, let me put V capital T of E capital T. This is minimize AT in RM. ET transpose QET plus plus a t e t plus b t a t transpose Q A T E T plus B T A T. Okay. 
So now we have an optimization problem to solve here. Yes, because UT dimension is RM. R RM. So XT XT is in RN. UT is in RM. WT is in RP. Okay. So AT also is in RM, and ET is in RN. Okay. So I have this expression. I want to minimize with respect to AT of this. Uh, at least at this point of time, it looks horrible. But I'll just show you that it's not that horrible. So let's uh, let's collect all the terms together. So I have ET transpose AT transpose QAT plus Q ET AT transpose R plus AT transpose, ET transpose, AT transpose, Q, BT, AT. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I have to have a minimum in front. Okay, now everything looks, looks correct. Any question so far? No? All right, so, so how do we solve this problem? Well, it's a minimization problem, and this is a quadratic cost. Uh, it's actually a convex function. It's a convex function because R is positive definite, B transpose QB is a positive semi-definite, so sum of positive definite plus positive semi-definite is a positive definite matrix. So this is a convex cost. So we can take the first derivative and we can set it equal to zero, and that gives us the optimal solution for this problem. So let me take the first derivative. That turns out to be R plus BT transpose Q BT. A T A star T minus no plus B T transpose Q A T X T equals to zero. No, not X T E T. Yeah, that's right. Actually, I should put two here, and I should put two here, and I should cancel them because it's fine. It's zero on the other side. OK, so this is the equation that the optimal A star T must satisfy. A star T is the optimal solution to that problem. Um, how did I get this? So when you have a convex function and you want to minimize the convex function, uh, remember that we talked about KKD theorem for constraint optimization. So it's the same idea. You take the first derivative, set it equal to 0, you get the optimal solution. We don't have any constraints here. So the constraint part of the KKD theorem will not apply. 
Right, so the rest of the theorem is just the first derivative should be equal to zero. Do you, do you see that? The first expression, gradient of fx star plus blah, 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 that should be equal to zero. So that should apply here. And that's what I'm applying there. Okay. So the optimal solution should satisfy this. You know, the theory behind this optimization is, of course, far more complicated. We have only covered KKT theorem in this class because constrained optimization is what we'll be solving most of the time. But, uh, uh, but if you're interested in optimization stuff, please uh, take my 5759 course uh, next year or something so that you can learn the optimization theory. It's very fascinating. Now I can rearrange the matrices in order to compute A star T. So A star T is minus So remember, my optimal policy is the optimal solution to that optimization problem. And that's given by this expression. And this is known as KT, which is known as the gain matrix, gain matrix. Okay, this is the gain matrix. Any questions so far? Okay, so this is uh, what we notice here in this case is that the optimal policy as a function of the error is actually a matrix which doesn't depend on the error. So this matrix is independent of the error. What does this matrix depend on? It depends on, it depends on R, BT, Q, and AT. Now, remember Q and R were design parameters that you pick at the beginning of optimization. And the AT and BT is basically the derivative of the, the, the state transition function at the nominal trajectory. So that is something that's given to us because the nominal trajectory is known to us, okay? So, so this particular gain matrix, once you fix the problem, once you fix the nominal trajectory, the gain matrix is fixed, okay? You don't have to worry about the gain matrix changing with the value of the error. And you multiply the gain matrix directly with the error and you get the value of the optimal policy evaluated at that particular ET. And that's the power. How difficult is the matrix multiplication? Very easy, okay? Matrix multiplication is extremely easy and so you can actually execute this algorithm in real time in any system, any embedded system, because matrix multiplication, even an FPGA or a small microcontroller can do this matrix multiplication. Now, along the same line, I can write the value function V of capital T of E of T is E of T transpose AT transpose QAT plus Q minus This is known as 
I mean, you can call this PT, capital PT. It's a positive definite matrix, uh, which is somewhat difficult to show, but it can be shown that it's a positive definite matrix. And this recursion is known as Riccati equation. Okay, any question? So this, this is, uh, how do you get this expression? You substitute the value of A star T, which is this horrible looking matrix expression, in this, uh, uh, in this equation. So you put A star T here, A star T, A star T, and then you simplify the expression, this is what you get. Okay, so there's no, there is no uh, magic here, it's just some matrix manipulation that leads us to this equation. And this is known as Riccati equation. And, uh, and what you notice is my value function at time t as a function of et is et transpose pt et. It's actually a quadratic function of et. Maybe it's positive semi-definite, not positive definite. <clears throat> okay. So we have a quadratic value function. So we started with a quadratic cost. And we started with a linear system and a quadratic cost. And we did one step of the dynamic program. And we found that the value function is quadratic. And the optimal strategy is linear in the error. Okay, and that's the reason why this particular uh, theory is so prevalent in feedback controls. It's because this is one of the situations where the solution is very elegant. You have a complicated optimization problem, which comes after a lot of complicated calculation. But once you get to the solution, the solution is actually very elegant. It's very compact very easy to understand, very easy to derive, and uh, it's widely applicable in a large variety of situations. Okay, as long as you don't have constraints, or the constraints are fairly inactive under the normal operating conditions. Of course, all of this will fail if you have hurricanes or tornadoes striking your system. Okay, in those situations, you don't talk about these small errors that you need to control. This whole theory is valid under normal operating condition where you know there's no hurricane, there is no complicated disaster going on. The expression for k small t and p small t is as follows. It's minus b t transpose p t plus one BT inverse, BT, PT plus 1, AT. So that's my optimal gain at every time T. And P of sub T is AT transpose PT plus 1, AT plus Q minus. Yeah, I think everything is correct. Yes. 
So I can compute the gain KT and I can compute the uh, positive semi-definite matrix PT recursively using this expression. Okay, I want to pause here for questions. This one? Uh, oh, yeah, that's a good question. So how do I get these expressions? Well, you apply the principle of mathematical induction. So you assume that the value function is of this form. So you assume that Vt plus one is of the form Et transpose Et plus one, you put it in this particular form, um, and then you show using the principle of mathematical induction that this is the expression for Kt and Pt. This is satisfied for the base case, which is uh, at the terminal time step. Okay, so it satisfies for the terminal time case, time time step. So the base case is correct, and uh, you show using induction that this is true across all time step. Okay, that's a good question. So mathematical induction is very powerful in this situation. Any other question? Okay, no other questions. Now let me connect this particular theory. So this is of course very complicated stuff, okay? Uh, or, or rather it looks complicated matrix manipulation, but actually when you have to execute it on a microcontroller, it's actually extremely cheap. It's just a few bunch of matrix inversion and matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is easy. Matrix inversion could be difficult for large matrices, but we are talking about uh, small matrices here. We're not talking about a thousand dimensional system. Although nowadays there are processors, uh, microprocessors, which can also take in, like do inversion for thousand dimensional matrices in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, let me connect this theory. So we have studied this theory now. Let me connect it to what you might have studied in your feedback controls class. So this is an R. So this is feedback controls, 3551 stuff. 3551 stuff. Let me call this PID controller, and let me use KT here. Uh, this is my ET. This is my UT, which is U bar T plus AT. This goes to my plant. This gives an output XT. And that gets fed back with a negative feedback loop into the actual system. So what did you do in your feedback controls class? How did you come up with the value of KT? Actually, in that case, in the feedback controls class, the K was not dependent on T at all. The K was invariant of T. Because our system was, our plant was invariant. It didn't have time varying matrices. This is all scalar stuff, by the way. ET is in R, this is in R, this is in R. Everything is scalar. That's what you did in the feedback controls class. Anyone remembers how K was computed? Right, so, so that was continuous time system. And the way you computed K in that particular class was you, ha you were given some specifications and you tried to figure out what values of gain K you should pick in order to make sure that the error goes to zero. This error process goes to zero eventually. This ET goes to zero eventually, right? That's what we did in the, in the feedback controls class in the 3551 type 
whatever equivalent class you may have taken in your undergrad. Okay? And this is the stuff from 1950s. Okay? So in 1950s, this was the thing to do, which was tune the PID controller so that all the performance specifications are met and your error goes to zero eventually. And now in two, 2020s, slowly we have moved away from this particular diagram where just a single value of k, I mean just pick one k which meets all the specifications and you are done, okay? Now in this case, we are saying not only we want to meet the performance specification, not only we want my ET to go to zero, we also want my AT to go to zero. I also want my effort, the cost of effort to go to zero. And not just that, I also have a way to manage the error in manage the relative magnitude of how the error should go to zero and how my control effort should go to zero, okay? Because you can pick Q and R matrices at the beginning of your optimization. So the 2020 stuff is a bit more advanced than what you were doing, what we were doing in 1950s. And it's not like this is not successful. I mean, our washing machine, dishwasher, refrigerator, and all those appliances, air conditioning system, they work on PID controllers just fine. Our vehicles, they work on PID controllers. Uh, aircrafts, rockets, all of them work on PID controllers just fine. However, nowadays the goal is not just to make a vehicle move forward reliably, but also to minimize emissions, right? And if you want to minimize emissions, this is no longer a good way to design controllers. This is a good way to design controllers, and this is where most of the vehicle industry is moving towards. Any questions so far? Some of the stuff that is happening at OSU, or has happened in OSU, along those lines is, you know, I'm affiliated with Center for Automotive Research, and a lot of people do a lot of automotive research there. And we have used this sort of theory, not exactly the LQR theory, but something similar, dynamic programming type theory, to minimize the air conditioning cost in the vehicle. Uh, this is not something that I have done, it's just uh, some colleagues that have done that. Minimize the energy consumption of autonomous vehicles. Uh, minimize the power split strategy in a hybrid vehicle, uh, and so on and so forth, like lots of different problems that are arising they can be solved using dynamic programming and theory of this type. Okay, so what we are doing here is slightly more advanced than what you did in 3551 or the equivalent feedback controls class. So that's all I have for today. In the next class, we are going to talk about MPC, which is uh, model predictive control, where you have to solve a similar optimization problem, but you have constraints. So you need to meet the constraints. And then we'll talk about singular perturbation theory, and we'll talk about how hierarchical control systems are designed. So I'll see you on Friday, and we'll talk about these stuff. Thank you.